Hi everybody and welcome to our third Muddiest Points video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the div division and multiplication hardware, then the ALU hardware, and then floating point conversion, just to uh, touch on the newest points uh, that we've been looking at. Um, so looking back at the basic multiplier, we've got two big components. We've got the uh, ALU and we've got a 64-bit wide product register. And the way this works is that the multiplicand is successively added to the project product register as we shift through. Now what this looks like is in uh, Logisim here, uh, what this looks like is we've got this little register, uh, we've got the mul multiplicand and I've already got it set up with some data in here, and we've got the multiplier. And we've got this product register here. And now this is a pretty fancy register. It's a 16-bit uh, because my, I've got uh, two 8-bit um, operands. It's a 16-bit register. And it also is a shift register. So I can load in at each time, at each location, and I can also shift over. So the way this works is that I've entered the multiplicand and the multiplier. Then I need to uh, set in it. So this is going to copy the um, uh, multi, uh, the multiplier into uh, the bottom half of the product and that's going to slowly be shifted out right uh, then it, so I'm going to uh, initialize it hit load and clock it once so that loads the multiplier in there and the basically every time there's a one in the least significant um, position it's going to add another copy of the multiplicand at the at the very beginning of the product right and as we shift over that's going to make a uh, higher and higher significance which is exactly what happens during the multiplication process if we're doing it by hand so uh, now that I've loaded that in there I'm going to unset in it uh, I'm going to clock it once that sets the least significant bit in here and that's going to allow me to copy uh, once I load in another version of the multiplicand. So now my product starting right here, so this is the beginning of the product, and this is my the end of my multiplicand, right? Um, and uh, as that slowly gets shifted out, is once this gets to uh, this position, we'll have completed the operation, right? So I load, I clock, that shifts one over, load, clock, shift another, load, clock, shift another, load, clock. So now I've got another copy again and it's offset just enough that uh, it lines up uh, correctly here. Right, shift, load, shift, load, shift, load, shift, load, shift. Right, so now I've done that nine to, uh, eight times, right? So the first one was just to initialize and then there's eight cycles of that load clock shift uh, process. And this is uh, the end of my, this is my product right here. So a bunch of leading zeros because it was a small number and there's uh, no big zeros at the beginning. Uh, but I do have two copies of 101 in here uh, spaced uh, apart correctly so that they uh, end up in the right places, right? And this is the um, value of what we should get out of the multiplier. So you can kind of see the process for how the multiplier works. Now the divider is more complicated. To work through this one I've set up a little example. It's very similar hardware. Um, whoops. There we go. Here's the divider. Uh, I've got the divisor. I've got another 32-bit ALU and the same style remainder um, shifter, right? And in this case we're going to be shifting right the whole time. We're going to be going the opposite direction. We've got shift left because we can use the same hardware to do the multiplier. So all the left shifts, uh, all the um, uh, all the shifts for multiplication go left, all the shifts for division go right. And what we do is here I've got the uh, system set up again, is we load in our divisor into the divisor register and we load in our dividend into the quotient or remainder register. So the quotient is ba we're gonna, basically going to be setting the quotient by shifting in a bit on the um, on the right, and then uh, modifying the remainder on the left. Right, and as that gets shifted out, we'll be accumulating our quotient. So we set this up. Uh, in our first step, we want to shift the dividend. Uh, 
left one that gives us an unknown quotient and we subtract one copy of the divisor. In this, in this case, because we started out with the remainder being negative, that gives us a negative value at the uh, very, uh, that gives us a negative value in the reminder, remainder register and that negative one at the beginning tells us that we want to set our quotient to zero, right? We don't want to, um, we want to set that quotient to zero because that's n uh, not a good, uh, that's not a good value. We couldn't actually take a copy of the divisor out of the remainder. So we set it to zero and move on to uh, the next one. And in this case, and, uh, and shift it in. And now that we've shifted in another bit from the dividend here, so we've shifted everything over, we set the quotient to zero, this one is, um, and we shift in a new unknown quotient, uh, we do one subtraction, we still get negative, uh, which means that we're going to set the quotient to zero again, then add in another copy of the divisor to make it uh, positive again. Then we do another shift. Now we've got 0011. Most of our dividend is in the remainder register. Uh, we do a subtraction that gives us a positive number this time, which means that we set a positive one. We set a one in the quotient. We shift over one more time. We do another subtraction that gives us an even zero, set our quotient bit, and now we've completed our um, completed our division. So the quotient here, uh, our divisor was 2, our dividend was 6 that we started out with, and the quotient, the remainder, is uh, 3, which makes total sense. And we have no, or the quotient is 3, and we have no remainder. If uh, there was anything left over at the end of this process, that would have been our remainder. And in MIPS, this register just gets copied into the high um, uh, high register and then this one gets copied into the low register. Next I want to talk about the ALU design. Now the goal, the whole goal of ALU is to support instructions. We've designed our instruction set architecture and we want to support these instructions by doing basic things like add, sub, and, nor, or, xor, and then the really important ones BEQ, BNE, and SLT. And these are the challenging ones. Uh, we know how to build adders, subtractors, and the uh, AND gates and NOR gates and OR gates and stuff like that are really simple. But supporting BEQ uh, uh, or uh, uh, branch equal, branch not equal, and set less than is kind of challenging because we don't really want to implement a comparator. We want to build something that already uses stuff that we have, like add and sub. So we want to do some basic operations. We've got add and sub. We've got the logical operations, which are really easy to implement. But we want to build a signal that allows us to uh, do set less than, do less than, and do equal to. And to do that, we basically use the adder, the subtraction hardware that we've already got. So we take, if we're determining if something is less than, if A is less than B, then we subtract A, uh, B from A, and if it's negative, then we know it's less than. Uh, if it's zero, then we know it's equal to, and that's all we need to do. So we're using the subtract hardware to implement less than and equal to. To get greater than, and equal, uh, to get greater than, we just do, we flip this signal, we invert this signal, which gives us everything that we need to know. So looking at the hardware that implements this, uh, we've got a very simple one-bit ALU uh, that works, uh, that takes three operation, that takes three operation bits and basically selects from these. So uh, operation zero is uh, an AND, operation one is OR, operation two is XOR, Operation 3 is NOR, and then we can do uh, add on operation 4 uh, using uh, our carry in or sub add. So this uh, inverts for um, inverts B for subtraction, and we can, we'll set a carry in of 1 to, to make that subtract. Uh, and we also have a set output here. So this is when we're doing the um, the negative detection, right? Because the most significant bit, the most significant bit of a negative number is always going to be one, right? So this set, the telling us that the most significant bit is set, um, it, we're going to use for a less than detection, right? And otherwise we have a pass through for the less than operation, right? Uh, and I'll show you how that works in the overall ALU. So here's our overall arithmetic and logic unit. Uh, and in this case, 
we've got A and B and that same one bit ALU copied eight times. So if we zoom out a little bit here, um, I can't fit the whole thing in the window. All right, we'll zoom back in. So we've got it copied eight times. We've got a subtraction uh, control signal. We've got our operation code. And we've got our op codes listed over here on the left. Right, so uh, zero, zero is and, or, XOR, nor. Uh, we use 100 zero, zero for add sub and 101 zero, one for less than or equal to. And we have to set the subtraction bit, uh, control bit, to make that work. So you can see subtract is uh, connected to the subtract bit on the ALU and also to CN because remember when we're subtracting we invert B and add one and that uh, allows us to do two's complement work and that signal propagates all the way down. And I've got these eight bits of A and B, our two input variables uh, spread out among all eight ALUs and then I've got the sum or result spitting out the end. At this time it's just doing AND and you can see uh, 1001 and 1010 gives us an AND of 1000. Um, also notice that most of these ALUs are not set. There are the, the set bit in all of these are not connected to anything except for the very last one. Remember this is my most significant bit and if it's set I want to run it I want it to run back up here so I'm going to follow this uh, to the very top and that one is connected to the last than. All the other less bits are connected to zero. So that means when I'm using um, when I'm using the when I want to do less than or equal when I'm making a decision I want to set it up so that I'm doing a subtraction between A and B and that less than will propagate back through if uh, A is greater than B or A is less than B because I'm subtracting B from A, right? So if we look at that, how that's set up, I set the, if I want to just uh, add these together, I'll do a 1, right? Uh, a 100, zero, zero, that's my add sub operation and you can see they add together all nicely, 100111, zero, zero, one, one, right? Just like uh, we would need to and it's uh, one zero zero because these two are on top of each other and we overflow into the next bit right now if I want to determine uh, less than I need to set the negative bit right or I need to set the subtract so now they're subtracting and I get all negative uh, values here uh, which makes total sense right and um, uh, I want to set to the one zero one and that gives me uh, my my signal because the most significant bit if I look at all of these uh, guys down here it's set all the way through and that carries back up into less than and gives me my um, value. Now the same thing for if I'm doing equal I use the same code except instead of looking at that one I've got this big nor here that is my zero signal right so what it's doing is allowing me to what it's doing is allowing me to see if all of the bits set are zero. So if they were equal, I'll just flip these around, if they were equal, um, A minus B ends up being zero, which sets uh, all of the results of the ALUs to zero, and it spits out, and I've got a flag for zero. And I've also got an overflow, uh, which means that, well, for subtraction, it doesn't mean anything. That's what it's supposed to mean, um, which is cool. Right, so now uh, the control unit is what does all sets up all of this stuff. So when it's when we're doing any operation that involves less than or equal, which includes our set less than, our branch uh, instructions, things like that, it'll set these signals. It'll set the operation. It'll set the signals so that the ALU performs the right operation. And then, in depending on these flags, it'll do some other operation, uh, such as set the program counter for the branch operations or uh, if we're just doing a um, or if we're just doing a, uh, uh, a one if we're just doing one of the uh, if we're just doing a set less than operation then it'll copy the result into a register and that'll give us everything we need to know okay so these were great questions and I'm really uh, excited about uh, next week so uh, let me know if you need anything else and I'll see you guys next week